What's up y'all, welcome back to Fish the Moment. In this video, I'm gonna be analyzing some data I collected from my own YouTube videos to determine which baits produce the most three pound plus bass for me on the lake. Let's get into it. As many of you know, here at Fish the Moment, I love using data to improve my bass fishing. Over the years, I've made several videos analyzing my own personal fishing trips and professional fishing tournaments to determine the most effective baits, cover, structure, areas, and everything in between to improve my bass fishing and help you guys improve yours. In this video, I want to take another crack at analyzing my own personal fishing experiences to determine how live scope or forward facing sonar has impacted my bass fishing. I got live scope on my boat about two years ago, and I want to see if that's changed the effectiveness of different baits that I throw, the different water clarities I fish, and a lot of other factors. To do this, I went through all of my YouTube videos over the past two years and collected data on every fish catch that appeared in one of those videos. I collected data on the baits I was throwing, the style of fishing, the water clarity, and other factors as well. I'm not going to get into all of them in this video, we're really just going to focus on baits because there's so much data and so much we could talk about that I had to narrow it down to one topic for this video. But by gathering all this data, I was able to draw some really interesting results that I want to share with you today. The key metric we're going to be looking at in this video is the number of three pound bass that I caught on each fishing trip. To calculate this, I basically watched every YouTube video and then counted up the number of three plus pound bass I caught on each bait in each video. I recorded them on their own separate line of data and then I also marked whether I was fishing offshore or shallow in that specific situation. The reason that I'm only looking at fish catches of bass that are three pounds or larger is because on my channel I do my catch 15 challenges where I have to try to catch five bass for 15 pounds. To complete those challenges, on average, I need to catch five three pound bass. So I wanna determine the best lures for targeting those three pound or bigger bass. One thing about the analysis here, again, is that it's only looking at two years of data. So there are going to be baits that don't show up in the data that I have caught three pound bass on in the past. And also some of these baits are catching bigger fish. They're catching five, six, and seven pounders. So that's not being accounted for in this analysis. In addition, I've caught more fish outside of videos that are over three pounds that I just didn't make videos about and post on the channel. But those are not gonna be included in these results. So there are a few gaps in here. There's some baits that I think I probably should still be throwing that aren't reflected in the results here, but I do feel like I have a pretty good sample size that is representative overall of how I've been fishing over the past two years and the baits I've been using. Without further ado, let's get into the results. I put together a series of charts that illustrates the data I collected. This first chart shows the number of three pound plus bass that I caught over the past two years offshore on specific baits. These are specifically offshore baits or baits that I'm throwing away from the shoreline out in the middle of the lake on offshore structure. This data shows that I caught 31 bass in a football jig that are three pounds or larger over the past two years in videos. This is by far the best performing bait on this chart. Second, we have the hair jig, and we have the Neko rig, deep diving crankbait, jerkbait, so on and so forth. It is pretty obvious here that I like throwing the football jig. You guys know that if you watch my videos, and it's resulted in a lot of fish catches. However, that doesn't really tell the whole story. One thing that I always like to do when I'm analyzing data is to determine how often I'm throwing that bait relative to the number of fish I'm catching to determine the actual effectiveness of that lure. A lot of times I might catch more fish in a football jig just because I throw it a lot more often. And you'll see that that's actually the case in this next graph. Here's a different graphic that illustrates my point. This graph shows the number of videos in which I caught a three pound plus bass on each bait offshore. So for example, with a football jig, I caught a three pound plus bass in 13 different videos using a football jig. This means that I threw the football jig a lot in my videos and it appeared in 13 of those videos, which is again, higher than all the other baits on this chart. Therefore, in the past chart, even though I caught more fish or more three pounders on that jig 31, it's probably a result of me throwing it in more videos and therefore potentially skewing the results. 
Therefore, instead of actually looking at the total number of fish I'm catching on each bait or how often I'm throwing it, I'm going to combine those two metrics and divide the total number of three pounders caught on each bait by the number of videos that that bait appeared in to get my effectiveness for that lure. And that's this chart right here. This chart here shows the effectiveness of each lure and it accounts for how often I'm fishing each bait. For example, the hair jig has a 3.3. This means that on average, I'm catching 3.3 bass, so they're three pounds or larger per fishing trip. There's a lot of threes in that number, so we'll pick a different one here. Let's take the jerk bait. So with the jerk bait, on average, when I'm fishing offshore, I'm catching about two and a half bass, so they're three pounds or larger per fishing trip. This means that if I go out fishing on an average day, I would expect to put two and a half, three pounders. Now you can't catch half of a bass, but let's say about two to three fish over three pounds on a jerk bait if I would go out on a normal day. This is really useful when I'm doing my Catch 15 Challenge videos because I can at least have a general idea of how many three pounders I can expect to catch on average if I use each bait. Again, this metric is for three pound bass or bigger. So for example, with this hair jig, if I catch three fish over three pounds, that might be a three pounder, a four pounder, and a five pounder. So I might not necessarily need to catch five three pound bass to get over 15 pounds. I can catch two fives, a three, and a couple of two pounders and still reach that goal. So it's not a perfect representation of exactly what I need to be doing. And at the same time, I might also be able to catch three fish in a hair jig, then two fish in a jerk bait or two fish on a football jig. So I can combine these different effectiveness scores to produce five three pound plus bass, if that makes sense. But the key with this graphic is that it really shows me which baits are the most effective for me in putting qu good quality fish in the boat. One of the most interesting things about this graph is that the football jig went from being the top bait in the number of three pounders caught graph to being the fourth highest bait in the effectiveness score. That's just because I'm not catching as many three pound plus bass when I throw a football jig as I am with a hair jig, neko rig, or with the jerk bait. And this is really interesting because it lines up with my use of forward facing sonar over the past two years. I got Garmin LiveScope here on my boat about two years ago, and because of that, I've been able to target suspended bass a lot more effectively. In the past, I've done analyses of my fishing and all the data for my YouTube videos and found that a football jig and a deep diving crankbait were by far my most productive lures. They caught the most fish for me and were in general my best big fish baits all around. And that was consistent year after year after year as I did my analyses. But that shifted over these past two years since putting Garmin LiveScope on the boat. In the past, I had to target fish that were more related to structure or towards the bottom because I wasn't able to use forward-facing sonar to see bass suspended in the middle of the water column and track them with that forward-facing sonar. This meant that I relied on baits like a football jig or a crankbait that were bottom-oriented baits. They got around brush piles, rock piles, things like that. And while they were very effective, that was really the only way that I could fish to go put those fish in the boat. I did fish for suspended bass at times and had mixed results. Some days I would do really well, some days I wouldn't do that well. And the reason for that is because those suspended bass have a tendency to roam and move and they're hard to follow if you don't have your forward facing sonar. If I graphed over a school of fish, for example, with down imaging, I might be able to see that they're suspended there, but they might move 20 yards before I actually set the trolling motor down and start fishing for them. But now with the Garmin LiveScope, I can graph that school of fish, see that they've moved on the LiveScope because they're not by my waypoint, and then just go a little bit further down the drop or the point, relocate those fish with the LiveScope and put them in the boat. And that's why I believe these top three baits stood above the football jig and the crankbait when that was never the case before. All three of these baits are suspended fishing lures or baits that target suspended bass. That hair jig is worked in the middle of the water column. Same thing with that Neko rig. I work it in the middle of the water column and the jerk baits. 
These baits are very effective at targeting those suspended bass, and I've caught a lot of really good fish over the years, the past two years, using these techniques. And you've seen this trend happen in a lot of professional fishing tournaments as well. A lot of the top competition out there is utilizing the forward-facing sonar and targeting suspended bass more than they ever have in the past, and I'm seeing that reflected in my results as well. This is a big shift in my own personal fishing, and it's super interesting to see this result because I had a feeling that this was going to be the case, but I wasn't 100% sure. It also means that I might need to be adjusting my strategy when I go to the lake. Instead of relying so much on the football jig, which is a bait that, as you can see from this chart, I use in more videos than any other bait, I might need to start focusing on suspended bass more than I already am because I am able to more effectively put fish in the boat when I'm using these suspended baits than with the football jig and the crankbait. Now, obviously I'm not going to stop using a football jig or stop using a deep diving crankbait by any means. I'm still gonna use those baits, they're still very effective, but I definitely need to reduce the amount that I'm throwing them and increase the amount I'm throwing these other baits to improve my odds of catching 15 pounds in my challenges and just improve my fishing overall. Now that we've taken a look at the offshore results, let's switch over to the shallow water results. As a lot of you guys know, I'm not that much of a shallow water angler, but surprisingly, I did have enough results to put together some charts. Apparently, I fish shallow in my videos more often than I actually think. And if we take a look at this chart here, you can see the different baits based on the number of three pound bass that I caught in videos over the past two years. My top bait here is a finesse jig, then we have the rock crawler crankbait, buzz bait, flat side crankbait, and the square bill crankbait. Again, this is the number of bass that I caught on each bait in my videos over the past two years, but this is not accounting for how often I throw them. Therefore, if we look at this chart here that shows the number of videos in which I caught a three pound plus bass on each bait, you can see I threw the finesse jig twice as much as any other bait. I threw the other baits pretty much equally across the board, but I definitely threw a finesse jig a lot more than anything else. If we then calculate our effectiveness score by taking the total number of fish catches divided by the number of trips in which I caught three pound plus bass with each bait, we can see how many three pound plus bass I can expect to catch on each bait in a given fishing trip. The top performer by far is that rock collar crankbait with 4.5 three pound plus bass per fishing trip on average. Now I only fished this in two different videos, so this result may be skewed, and honestly there's not a massive sample size for any of this, so I wouldn't say that these results are 100% spot on and that you should, you know, base all of your fishing off these results. I would say that these results are directionally accurate. They will point me in the right direction, give me some decent insights, but I'm not going to necessarily say that the rock crawler crankbait is the only bait I'm ever going to throw. But I can use this data to come up with some high level takeaways, and that's what I'm going to do here with this analysis. I'm not going to treat these results as gold, and hopefully that makes sense. And if we take a look at these results, you can see that the only baits that produce a number or effectiveness score over two are the rock crawler crankbait, the square bill crankbait, the buzz bait, and the flat side crankbait. The one thing that all these baits have in common is that they're reaction baits. Three of the baits are actually crankbaits, and then one of them is the buzz bait. And it seems like for me, when I go up shallow, I have the most success when I pick up a moving bait and I cover water down the shoreline. I know this about myself just from my own personal fishing. I'm not much of a flipper fishing slow up in shallow water. If I am going to fish, up shallow, I like to be covering water, fishing as much water as possible, making a thousand casts a day. It's all about efficiency for me when I'm fishing, and I feel like when you cover water like that, you can be more efficient. When I'm offshore, I use my electronics to be efficient, but when I'm up shallow, it's all about the number of casts you can make. Therefore, these results make a lot of sense to me, and honestly, they show me that if I'm going to be fishing up shallow, I need to only go up shallow when I can fish a reaction bait, a crankbait, or a buzz bait, and I honestly don't need to be going up shallow all that often if I need to be fishing really uh, slowly, pitching a jig, stuff like that, because that just doesn't work that well for me. That's not to say that you can't catch fish flipping and that's a bad technique. On the contrary, there's a lot of great flippers and the great shallow water anglers that fish slower. It's just not my style. And if I was going to go to the lake, I'm probably better served when you have a day that's not great for shallow water reaction baits to just move offshore. 
if you take a look at the conditions that are best for crankbaits and buzzbaits, it's usually your cloudy days, windy days, or days when you have prefront conditions. And then the best days for fishing offshore for suspended bass with your hair jigs, necker rigs, and jerk baits are on days when you have bluebird skies, no wind, bright sun, post front conditions. This is actually really nice because my two results here lend themselves hand in hand. If I find the conditions are more conducive up shallow for reaction bite, I just need to start doing that and ignore the offshore bite. But if the conditions are the opposite, we have bluebird skies, no wind, I need to be offshore targeting those suspended bass or maybe throwing the football jig and crankbait if those conditions also show up because those baits still are somewhat effective for me. This is really, really useful when I go to my Catch 15 challenges because it now kind of allows me to limit what my options are in those challenges. One thing about bass fishing that's really frustrating at times is that you have a million things that you can do. I could go skip boat docks, flip a jig, throw a crankbait, go offshore and crank, go offshore and throw a swim bait or live scope. There's so many things to do. And when you have all those options, you kind of get information overload. Therefore, it's important to narrow down to what your strengths are and determine what you should be doing that makes you the most effective. Another thing it's allowed me to do is simplify all of my tackle. And after this analysis, I've actually gone through and redone almost all of my fishing rods here to limit my bait selection to these key baits that allow me to be the most effective. Now I wanted to run through what I did here just to give you an idea of how I've changed my tackle after this analysis. The first thing I'm gonna show you are my offshore baits. Again, these are the baits I'm going to use when I have those post front conditions, bluebird skies, no wind. The first thing I did was tie on two different hair jigs. One of these is an Arkansas Custom Tackle Company 3 8 ounce hair jig. It's just made by a local shop in my area. And the other one is a half ounce Cumberland Pro white hair jig. And both of these are on a Denali 7 foot 2 medium heavy action worm and jig rod with 12 pound Sunline FC Snapper fluorocarbon and an Abu Garcia Black Max reel. Exact same setup on both of these 631 Gurashio reel. And I basically wanted to have two different hair jigs tied on that have a little bit different coloring and a little bit different weight because it was definitely my most effective bait based on the results and I need to be throwing them more often. And honestly, I haven't really experimented with different size baits. Normally, I just go with this half ounce and call it a day. So it should be interesting to see how throwing a little bit different bait might improve my fishing results. Next up, we have the second most effective bait offshore, which is the Neko rig. Just like the hair jig, I decided to try two different Neko rigs on pretty much identical setups. This is a Yamamoto Cuttail Worm, my favorite Neko rig worm, it's a six and a half inch worm. And I put a uh, 130 or a 332nd ounce nail weight in this Neko rig worm with a weedless wacky rig hook. And I put an eighth ounce nail weight in this Neko rig with again, a weedless wacky rig hook. And I have just two different color worms, a black and a green pumpkin. Both of these are paired on a Denali seven foot four medium heavy multi-purpose spinning rod exact same setup so I can make sure that I feel comfortable with both. And they both have 20 pound Sunline braided line with an eight pound FC Sniper fluorocarbon leader. So I have both those with a little bit different weight, a little bit different color, but kind of the same setup so I can try that Neko rig in different situations. These rods are just gonna be on the deck of my boat at all times going forward here because they are by far the two most effective baits for me. The third style of bait that I'm always gonna have on the deck of the boat going forward is a jerk bait. And in this case, I have two separate jerk baits as well. The first is a Mega Bass Vision 110 jerk bait, just a standard Vision 110. And I'm pairing that on a six foot eight, medium heavy action, moderate Denali jerk bait rod. This is from the Ozark series of rods. And I like that six eight rod with that little bit shallower diving jerk bait. I just have it on an Abu Garcia uh, Max Z or Max X reel. It's one of the new Black Max style reels, like 50 bucks. And I'm pairing that on some 10 pound FC Sniper fluorocarbon from Sunline. And then for the other jerk bait, I'm actually going with a deeper diving jerk bait to give me an option with the shallower and the deeper option. This is the Mega Bass Vision 110 Plus 2 jerk bait, a lot deeper diver. And as a result, I'm using a longer rod. This is a Denali seven foot medium action moderate crankbait rod in the Lithium Pro line. And I'm pairing that with, again, 10 pound Sunline FC Sniper 
fluorocarbon, like 10 pound test to really get that jerk bait to its maximum depth. I have this on a Cast King Mag Jaws reel, seven to one gear ratio. I got it for like 60 bucks on Amazon, so not a bad deal. This has given me a lot of different flexibility and options for those suspended bass offshore. And I basically have two different options with each bait, depending on depth of water I'm fishing, the water clarity and other factors. This allows me to fish the moment a lot better and fish the conditions based on what I face without having to change up all of my equipment. Now, obviously if you don't have as many rods as I do, you can just go with one of these options and then obviously change your lures on the water. And a lot of these setups are relatively the same, so you can get away with just one rod, change out the baits. I like to have a lot of rods and then cheap reels. That's kind of my uh, uh, MO. I've always gone with the 50 or the 30 to $50 reels and then more rods so I can have the flexibility of tying on a lot of different baits. A few other things I do have tied on still, obviously, is like a football jig. This is my Fish the Moment Offshore jig on a seven foot two heavy action worm and jig rod from the Covert series of Denali. And I actually have a promo code that I have from working with Denali. They sponsor the channel. If you guys do wanna check out any of these rods, they're all linked down in the description. And if you use their promo code, FTM2022, all caps, you will get a 30% discount on all of the Denali rods you purchase from DenaliRods.com in your first order. So definitely check out that discount there. It's a great way to get a bunch of nice rods at a really good price. Price. And that's it for my offshore rods. Next up, we have my shallow water rods. And honestly, I only have three rigged up because I don't fish up shallow as often as I do offshore. So I don't want to load up my deck with a bunch of shallow water baits. But I do wanna have a few on just in case the scenario calls for it. The first bait I have on is that Spro Rock Crawler 55. It is a great bait in my area of the country in the Ozarks. And one thing to call out is that the baits that I'm throwing here, guys, are specific to my region of the country and the lakes that I fish. If you do this analysis for yourself, you might find that the baits that are the most effective for you are completely different because of the types of lakes you're fishing, the style of fishing you do, stuff like that. So I'm just showing you what I have tied on because it's what works for me. But again, this might not be perfect for your region of the country. So you may want to do this analysis for yourself as well. I just have that on a seven foot two medium heavy action, moderate covert light crankbait rod, Abu Garcia Black Max Reel, 12 pound FC Sniper fluorocarbon. So I got that rock crawler tied on. I also have a little square bill crankbait which is another one of those really effective baits for me. This is the Mega Bass S crank. It's the 1.2 size, so the smallest size in that. I really love this crankbait for shallow water. You can crank it through literally anything, logs, brush piles, uh, big trees, anything like that. So I really like this square bill and it also doesn't break the lip on it. I have a lot of square bills over the years that I've broken lips on and this one doesn't. So that's also very handy. It saves me some time retying. And I just throw that on a um, covert light 610 medium moderate action crankbait rod from Denali with a seven to one gear ratio max Z reel. Gear ratio doesn't really matter that much to me, it's just our $50 reel. And again, some 15 or some 14 pound uh, Sunline FC Sniper fluorocarbon. So uh, a little bit heavier line in the square bill, 14 pound test, but pretty much the same deal. And then finally, I have my buzz bait rod. I love throwing the buzz bait, one of my favorite ways to catch fish. And this is just a War Eagle Buzz Toad Buzz Bait, 3 8 ounce, all black with a Zoom Horny Toad on the back. And actually, that buzz bait comes with like a a uh, horny toad keeper or a buzz bait um, trailer keeper on it. So that's why I like this one. I'll link it down in the description if you wanna check it out. Throwing that on a seven foot four heavy action multi-purpose Denali attack series rod. This rod has a little bit of bend to it, which is good because I'm throwing this on some 50 pound sunline braided line. I always throw my buzz baits on braided line just because a lot of times I'm making long casts and I wanna be able to ensure I get a good hookup on those fish. It also helps sometimes skipping that buzz bait around as well. So just throwing 50 pound braid, sunline braid with another Black Max $50 reel. And those are kind of my key setups, guys. I do have other baits that I talked about that are probably going to be effective. I got one right here. It's a flat side crankbait. We're kind of out of the season for it, but if we were fishing in colder temperatures in the middle of the winter, I probably would switch out the square bill crankbait for that flat side crankbait. Just cut this one off, put this one on. I just don't have enough rods to be able to put everything on. I kind of 
took a lot of rods up for the offshore baits. So uh, if I needed to, I would switch out the square bill for that flat side crankbait, no problem. And I also have a few other rods that I have rigged up still with some other confidence baits. I'm not gonna give up on all the baits that I like to throw. It's kind of going overboard if I trust these results perfectly. So a few other rods that I do have rigged up is I have a couple deep diving crankbaits still rigged up, a 6XD, and then a Deep X 300 by Megabass. I always love deep cranking still, so if the situation calls for it, I'll have a couple crankbait rods ready to go. I also have a few other baits tied on. One of them is a Demiki rig, which is something I want to experiment with more offshore. Michael Neal's been killing them all over the country on this little Demiki rig. It's just a little Jenko tremor shad, three and a half inch on a little ball head, quarter ounce. And I just have this on a Denali seven foot two medium heavy action spinning rod. And basically this is another suspended fish bait that goes well with like the hair jigs, the jerk baits, Neko rigs that I don't have a lot of data on, but I want to experiment with. So I have that rigged up. And I also always like to have some type of flipping bait or some type of slow moving bait that isn't a football jig. So we're kind of getting into the spawn here. So I do have my flipping tube on and you know, guys, even though I don't maybe catch as many fish on the flipping tube, if I see a juicy lay down or a juicy patch of grass, it's always good to have something to flip in there. I can pick up the rod, make five, six casts with it. And even if I catch one three pounder off of it, it's worth it. I'm not gonna make this my key bait that I'm gonna throw all the time, but it's always good to have a few extra baits. Just if you see the perfect opportunity, it sets up great to throw it. And then as the year gets on, I'll probably just take the tube off and just put on a little Zoom Old Monster 10 inch worm on that same setup, just a quarter ounce Denali tungsten weight and a five aught uh, extra wide gap Gamakatsu hook. So those are all of my setups I have going into the boat. This is all my rods. So they're going in the boat, some of them are going on the deck and we're gonna be rolling with that for the foreseeable future. And that's how I use data guys to improve my bass fishing. I look at all the results. I try to determine effectiveness. I try to take insights from the data based on how I should be fishing and then apply that to my upcoming challenges. Hopefully you learned something about how you can use data to improve your bass fishing. If you guys do want any more information about my past studies that I've done or past analyses, I'll leave them down in the description below. And if you guys like content like this, make sure to subscribe to the Fish the Moment YouTube channel so you can see more of my bass nerd information. And honestly, if you guys are still here after I talk about all that data, all my baits, everything like that, you guys are a true fishing nerd just like me. So leave it a comment down below if you've made it this far. I'd love to know how many people made it to the end. So Thanks again for checking out this video, guys. We'll see you all in the next one.